This is Leon Ferranti speaking with Peter Owen, an artist uh, at the mill in Adelaide. Hi Peter, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your art? Uh, yeah, I've been making lamps for the last uh, year or so. Uh, furniture before that, and before furniture, music and writing and all that yeah. kind of stuff. The furniture became the, the practical way by which I actually started to produce things for people. Myself, I don't know, background. too much to say. Background, yeah. born in Perth, lived in Sydney from 20 and just moved to Adelaide about a year and a half ago. So lamps are kind of a thing that I've done since I hit the ground in Adelaide. Oh, what were you doing before the mill? I spent my 20s working as a stagehand at the Opera House in Sydney. And it was during that time, because I kind of ended up in there because I wanted to be a rock star. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to be a musician. We all do. I wanted to be a musician. And, um, and, but then by the end of my 20s, I was like, this ain't going anywhere. The thing I was and had, had become was a carpenter okay. as a stagehand. So yeah. um, I thought, oh, well, I'll put aside the ambitious rock star idea and embrace the humble woodworker idea. And that didn't work straight away, I had a lot to learn still, so I worked at the Arts Union, I ended up managing a woodworking school and doing various things over the years. Uh, but when I came to Adelaide I thought, look, I've got this kind of window where I can put most of my time between caring for my son, yeah. um, because my wife's the breadwinner at the yeah. moment, <laughs> um, yeah. and, um, and so between caring for my son Tom and being able to come into the mill, I've been making some lamps and selling yeah. a few lamps. Tell us a little bit about the mill and the role that it plays for you or for other people, I guess. Um, yeah, it's like an artist space in the city, but it's got as much focus on the performing arts. It's got a little theatre there as it does with painterly craft. It's, a, it, it's the sum of all arts yeah. is its motto. So, um, And I thought that was pretty good for me because while I make lamps, the idea of the lamps was to for them to be a platform for collaboration. Yeah. And I think your current uh, exhibition, which where you collaborate with the other artists who are helping you do some of the functional lighting that you do really exhibits the nature of the space that you live in where you're all helping each other and yeah. working together I guess. It's great. What do you actually like about being an artist and what's your motivation? I mean you've expressed a little bit of that but push like your it. manifesto? Or... My manifesto, <laughs> I, well my philosophy. Um, I think I'm a, one of the things with me is uh, a, I am a philosopher, that doesn't mean I'm a good philosopher, I think we're all philosophers, but I just, I spend a lot of time trying to come up with a general principle of things <laughs> and, and particularly art, I've always been into art because I think art represents the point where there's a breach from the kind of philosophical objective to the arts and that's because I think it's where you accept and go into a world that is incredibly detailed. So you don't have formula, you, don't have, you can't sum the world up in E equals MC squared, you know, it's too vacuous. You, you actually, at every rock that you unturn and every point that you go. And so really when you meet different artists, it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm really into painting shells. But, you, know, they, you know, they come up with some, like, they're like, they've gone down this particular unique place. Or, yeah. you know, if they're cartoonists and they're playing with our whole way in which we deal with generalisation and its loose forms, you know, like there's all these different, I find all the artists, what makes them make sense in a world of rules and philosophies Absolutely. is that they're, Dealing with the details and, and without breaking knowing breaking the rules because the rules yeah. can't see it all, yeah. kind of thing. So that's so that's why art matters to me. Yeah. Have you always done art, or is this something new? I mean, you mentioned being a carpenter, but if yeah, you go back in time to um, childhood or whatever. Yeah, I think so. I think I hit a point in my. <clears throat> late teens when I you know, have to work out what your career is. I thought, well, what's the thing I'm best at? Which is probably playing Lego. <laughs> you know, but it was being creative and artistic or whatever. And so I thought, well, I need to pick a, a win. And the win that made sense at the time was to become a rock star, <laughs> and, um, which I was never particularly good at. I, but I was definitely into writing songs and I got into music for its diary, for lack of a better word, its introspective powers and all that kind of stuff. So... Um, and so I've always moved around and been interested in different arts, but in a very pie in the sky way, which I think is part of the rock stuff. Yeah. Total yeah. pie in the sky. Is, um, and so the carpentry became a way of 
making it happen. You know, like, oh, well, what if I did it as a little business or something like that? So um, philosophy becomes practice. Well, so I can practice. And especially as I've become more into the details, of course, that's in the living of your day. You know, it's nice to sit in your head, but if you're philosophizing in your head, you're stuck in the general in a way. So kind of like each lamp that I make, especially because I'm like repurposing something, there's always yeah. a discovery and an enigma in the mix. And it's that, and so these lamps in particular, I'm trying to balance like between having an element of manufacture, but having an element of surprise. So they are always different, but that's because I think when it comes to the permaculture idea and responding to issues like climate change and our relationship to the environment, that the reason why so much stuff gets thrown out and doesn't work, or you know, and we just can't, is because you have to deal with details. Everything breaks in new and fresh ways. And when I find stuff on the street to turn into a lamp. I've got to have a way that I can predictably use it because otherwise it'd take forever, but also to deal with its uniqueness. So yeah. maybe you can pass on what made it so interesting to someone else by converting it into a usable form or a work of art that brings their attention to that. All, yeah. all those kind of ideas. Yeah. Have you studied art and is it that important to you? Um, so not formally, but yeah, like as a matter of life activity, yes. Like, um, especially at the Opera House for years. I mean, my job is the flyman, like doing the curtains yeah. and doing all the stuff. So it's a lot of like reading some books on the side and then you're going to get up and then pull Courses it. here and there to, to um, learn things. I, never, I was so always like against it. I was always against it for some reason. Maybe my school wasn't very good and I just had a knee-jerk reaction for years. I think just I was on my own. I, I didn't do that well in school. I didn't do that badly. I didn't do that well. And I kind of came alive once I left school, once I started trying to go, well, what, how would I be a good musician? How what are these things how do I once I started to follow my own intuition and problems as they presented themselves that was where my motivation was and I could write those essays so to speak whereas if I'm kind of going and getting some dry lesson about Descartes or something I'm not going to do it whereas if I kind of go one day I woke up and I was like oh I, I really want to understand what's happened in art for the last hundred years so I look at Picasso or Jackson Pollock and think it's not crap <laughs> and so I got really into that space and he's like, he made the joke with the manifesto at the front there are a lot of manifestos during that time in the arts and so I dabble in a bit of a manifesto. That's good because that shows thinking and it's experiential so you're not waiting to be taught or trained, you're actually seeking yep. knowledge and, and practice. I mean I pay a certain price of mm. like reinventing the wheel and all those things that come from, if I had some good teachers around me they'd be like, oh Pete just read this book or you know, nudge me in the right direction. But with that said, I think that the benefit of the way I've gone is I've really mixed media. Like I've yeah. like spent ages just because I worked at the Opera House being really into drama and trying to understand what makes plays tick and all that kind of stuff. So, and that's really brought me a whole thematic side, you know, very into kind of what's the premise of this lamp, you know, whatever, yeah. like, and, you know, like I think I've gotten the benefit of being uh, broad, I guess, in, that, in, in my artistic interest. That's fantastic. Now, what would you like to do with your art uh, now and in the future? Have you got any aspirations? I think the thing where I keep coming unstuck is I keep tying it to a medium in the sense that, like, I want to be a rock star, then I do the hunt. So that was an ambitious one. And then the humble one is I'll make lamps, I'll make it, I'll be a carpenter. That clashes with making money too. <laughs> you know, you've got to yeah. make a whole bunch of lamps and you've got to do a whole bunch of stuff for that to make sense. And then there's all these tensions and you lose the magic once you start turning into, you know, bloody blah, blah. So my one is more like, well, the other path is one of more like an irreverence to that attaching the artistic sensibility to any one medium or object. It's not that you don't focus on your areas because you do in your day, you know, like, but that it's like life itself, like everything that I do could do with the artistic lens. Yep. You know, I, I and suddenly I realised, well, I do spend a large part of my day cooking. So why don't I improve my craft and my, you know, my understanding there while I'm doing it? Like bump my under. I just have, oh yeah, heat goes on. You know, like simple way of understanding. Well, why don't I break through and listen to the subtlety every time I practice it? So I think where where next? While I'll do the lamps where they fit, I think it, like I keep missing that it needs to be within a broader way of doing things than any one outlet. Yeah, so I guess you're kind of like a polymath. You want to do a lot of different things and explore things. Yeah. And the lamp's kind of part of it, but it could doesn't have to be yeah. there. Because I'm not trying to be the best, right? The problem with the polymath is you can't be the best. No. But I'm trying to, to fit within a thing. And I think, and I'm trying, I'm spending all of this time 
doing these other tasks. I just kind of like zoned out because I want to get back to doing my art. No, I understand. Or I go, well, hold on, well, where am I? You know, what, how do I, what is being artful? Like it's, oh, you know, I can't even talk. Like I talk to do different like, things. I, like my wife at home, I start like breaking down like processes <laughs> like I would like with woodworking. Because with yeah. woodworking, you know, you start with, oh, cut with the grain and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But then you get like, nah, if it's a cold day, you want to, you know, like and you come up with all these subtleties yeah. to get the better and better results that people see. But I just start going, oh, you know, like, Turn the light switches off over here, you know, and she starts to get annoyed because it's too far. But like, you know, you start coming out with well, these. Because people don't don't know yeah. that. Because when I saw your stuff, I looked at the joints and I thought, wow, these are old things, but you've played around with them to make these beautiful little joints, and the joints themselves are a work of art. Well, I think that that's, I think that is some of the ideas coming out in the object, which you want it to do because yeah. you want to hit people on that intuitive level yeah. where you don't have to explain. Oh, that's what I was up to. Like they just kind of feel. Oh, why, why would you do it that way? Why are they different colours? Or you know. But you need to maybe need to explain. But maybe a bit of explaining could help. Do a <laughs> YouTube presentation of this is how I do it. Maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's something for the future. Uh, now, what are your strongest influences and favourite subjects, uh, mediums, materials? Oh, um, so yeah, music is like is like lives through what I do. I like use its metaphor for everything. I was like one of the reasons I love music originally was like you know, the old recording studios. Yeah, and they had like you know all the levers and stuff. And then you know by the time I was doing it, like it was all in the computer. It's all in the box, and, the, and that was good because you had like you could do so much more than the Beatles ever could. But then it was you'd been given it all, so you lost. When I got into woodworking, I was like, oh, I could start setting up my workbench like an old school recording <laughs> school. You know, so I like that tactical creative space. I, I get really confused. You know, some people said, oh, why don't you create stuff in the computer? Like you do amazing furniture designs in computer, three D printing. 3D printing and that, but I just find that what happens once you start to take those bits, like if you kill what was connecting you with yeah. it, and you, and I think I see it as well. I mean, I'm a bit nervous with chat GTP and all that kind of stuff because I know from woodworking, like people don't know how to recognize in that the kind of hand element because they just recognize the ten dollar version of it at Kmart that just like came at a certain cost of producing at that yeah. level isn't factored in to the money, but it is a factor. But they can't see where the hand was, which is what they want, I think. You know, so I think what we want, we want like the objects to have this opportunity of investment and other people present and, oh, wow, well, you overcame that in the creation, you know, all this. Whereas um, when we live in a world of the computer making that leap all the time for us, it just suddenly turns that thing into a cliche. Like I think of wood carving. Like wood carving is cool, but it just I, it's, my brain just sees it and it thinks like a CNC machine did it and I just can't appreciate yeah. it's art anymore. So I worry with something like ChatGTP, like, are we just going to all this, like, kind of stuff? We're just going to start to go, well, I can't tell you between a computer doing that or a person. So that no longer expresses that space. What is the most difficult thing you've faced as an artist? Reconciling it with a day job. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it takes a lot of time and practice. And so, hey, wouldn't it be good if it was associated with your income? <laughs> it just that seems not to work out. It's too, you're putting too much care into it for what people can afford under these circumstances. And do you think it's you that's causing that, that limiting or is it something about the way art is set up in society? Is it? I think I'm kind of, because I really got into with these lamps of kind of, okay, let's see if I can do a deal with manufacture. You know, how, how much can I be repeating myself and how much can it be novel? And I just was blown away by how, compared to how things are produced in factories, how quickly touching it with a human hand and giving it consideration just went boom in cost. You know, what it is an hour yeah. to, you know, when you look at objects, so I just look at everything and just go, wow, like, that's, everything is so cheap in mm. that respect. But I think that cheapness comes, is coming at a great cost in the system. I don't know what the next move is there. As I said before, I think to find my meaning in life itself rather than attaching it to a medium. And, and so then maybe I end up working in a library or something like that and to do it. And I just really enjoy that for what that is. And I've done that at different points in my life. I've, you know, this last year was probably the most amount of time I've been able to give artistic practice. You know, my years as a stage hand at the Opera House, I enjoyed that for what a, an artistic exercise in its own right. How do you know when your work is done? Well, I actually feel like I have to, like there's a certain, because I've done this before with music, 
the half-written musicals out there that I never finished. So is that you can feel the life of it is only for so long before you lose the energy to complete it. So you got to bring it home at the right moment. What I really love with the woodworking is, unlike with music, you could maybe play it and go, oh, I didn't like that, and play it over and over and over and over. Whereas the woodworking, once you make a chop and cut it, you're kind of committed to a certain course. Yeah. So it kind of like brings you to a close no matter what. There's a time and a place that the idea's got a certain life for you and you've got to complete it in that time or it ain't happening. And you don't fiddle and change it. You, edit you it. get a little bit of a fiddle, a little bit as it closes up, but if you go too much, it wobbles and falls apart. That's it, yeah. I'd like to thank you, Peter, for sharing your ideas and, and your time with us. It's very interesting to hear about your version of the way things are in, in mm -hmm. your art world. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers.